Hello sewing people of the internet. I frequently do sewing projects that aren't worth making a video about because they're too specific uh, or I know they're just not going to perform as a video and it takes quite a bit of work to make videos and put them on YouTube. Uh, but in this case this project was interesting enough, uh, surprisingly interesting actually, that I thought there might be something to learn from it. I want to make sure to make this very clear up front. There's no point in me giving you every dimension of this project. I don't even know what the brand of the speaker is that this is for. This is for a large speaker for uh, someone who's really into uh, audio. Inevitably, somebody's going to ask, you know, for all the dimensions and stuff. Part of the point of this project was, you know, I, I was given dimensions to work from and I made the project. And if somebody gives you different dimensions, you make a different cover to fit that project, not this one. So anyway, I don't expect to hear a lot of measurements other than me throwing out numbers as examples and proportions and stuff. This is just a simple dust cover. I make these fairly often for people for different audio gear. This project had some interesting quirks to it, so I thought I'd share. So let's take a look. And before we get into it, if you like what I do here and you're not subscribed, make sure you click the subscribe button, click the notification bell so you know when I upload new videos. Clicking like is always a big help. And if you want a cool t-shirt to show everybody else that you're into sewing, you can see a shelf below and a link in the description where you can buy it. So this cover is to cover a pretty massive speaker. I don't have the speaker, so I just made out of some scrap wood something of the right size so I could confirm that everything was fitting the way I wanted it to. The two interesting things about this cover that make it different from what I normally do is, one, required a cutout on the back, I assume for some wires or something. I, I don't actually know. The customer just said it needs to have a cutout of this size at this location. So that's what's there. But most interestingly is the, the customer asked for one corner in particular, this front corner, to be open about two thirds of the way up, maybe three quarters of the way up, uh, to make the cover easier to take off and put back on. And what he originally said was just to leave it open and maybe put some Velcro or something to keep it closed. Well, with it being this, this big of a cover, I thought that a zipper would be a much better option. So that's what I went with. What made this a fun project to do was the challenge of you know, making sure that this zipper lays directly on the corner and hopefully it wasn't obvious to you before I unzipped it that there's a zipper there. It's a, you know, relatively subtle look. So I'm, I'm happy with how that came out. So in this video, I'll show you how I made this cover. I did some things differently. Um, you may never have a need to make a cover like this, but there may be some other aspects of its construction that you can incorporate into some other project you have. The person I'm making these covers for sent me this excellent sketch to lay out exactly what he wanted. Between this and some back and forth emails that helped get the project going, I appreciate him doing that. So using this sketch, I was able to figure out the pieces I need to cut out to make the cover. Normally when I make a cover like this, uh, you know, it's a rectangular inverted box basically with an open bottom. Normally I'll cut out the top piece and then I'll have a separate piece for each of the four sides and I'll sew that all together. Because of the zipper being on the corner and the size of this cover, I tried something different uh, that worked out really well where I have a top piece as normal but then the sides are all one piece. There are no corner seams except for the one where the zipper will be. One hurdle that created for me is I needed to be very certain that I put this cutout in the right place. Uh, if, I, if I made four individual pieces, then I just would need to make sure I sewed the one with the cutout into the right position, uh, but I wouldn't be as committed when I cut it as I am with this. If I cut this in the wrong position, this entire piece is scrap. So, Using the diagram, I know that this corner is where the zipper will be, and that's this edge of the fabric. So the next side is 15 and a half inches, so I just measured out 16 inches because I needed a half inch seam allowance for the zipper. And that section represents that first side. Then I measured nine and three quarters inches, and that represents the back side where the cutout is. 
and then from there another 15 and a half and another nine and three quarters with a half inch seam allowance. So I only have to account for one seam allowance doing it this way. The only other thing I need to keep in mind is that the face of the fabric that's facing up right now is the wrong side. Uh, so I need to make sure I keep myself oriented as to which side is facing up or this could be on exactly the opposite side it's supposed to be. The next problem I had to solve was having a zipper that is closed when it's all the way at the bottom and opens going to the top and uh, extending that zipper by about eight inches because uh, we wanted the zipper not to go all the way to the top. We wanted to have the top eight inches closed. This is exactly how I do the zipper extensions. If you go back a video or two, uh, I had a video discussing different methods of using zippers and I talked about using zipper extensions. This is exactly that. Just made this tab that will continue what would have been the zipper to the seam that it gets sewn into. Doing a zipper this way, it's critical that you put the slider on because the slider goes on from this direction before you sew this zipper tab on. I made that mistake on the first one. I had this all sewn in and realized I had to take it apart to get the zipper on. You can't put the zipper on from this end because the zipper would be going in the direction where it's closing the zipper. You need it to be opening going that way. I make a lot of backpacks and bags and stuff and most of the zippers I deal with are closed on both ends but in this case the zipper is open at the bottom which means I need to have some kind of a zipper stop to prevent the slider from coming off when I zip the zipper closed. I could use metal stops. I have a video about that way way back in my uh, videos but in this case I'm just going to make some stops out of Milspec 4088 nylon that I also use for binding. Speaking of binding, it's going to be the first sewing process is uh, binding this U-shaped opening. The next step for me is I want to fold a single fold hem of a half inch into the bottom of the piece and sew that down. The reason I'm doing a single fold is I cut this nylon with a hot knife so I don't have to worry about the edges fraying and it's just much simpler to do a single fold hem. In order to accomplish that I've marked a one inch line all the way across the bottom that I can fold to a line an inch away from the bottom, if you fold the edge to that line, you'll have a half inch fold. To make that line, I just use a piece of one inch wide aluminum that I have in the shop, just laid it on the edge and drew the line. Before I fold this, I want to use the hot knife to cut off the edges of the binding so that those won't fray and I can just fold them into that hem. The customer on this project requested white thread for the bottom part of the cover just to have contrast. Uh, and I'm using my Thompson PWZ 500 for the simple and important reason that it already has white thread in it. Uh, you could sew this on any machine.
The two ends are going to be the seam where the zipper is sewn to, and I just need to do the same half inch fold over to them. Again, I'm going to use my very convenient piece of aluminum. Probably ought to cut this thing down to a reasonable size. I want my zipper opening to stop eight inches down from the top seam, so I need this uh, zipper extension that I'm already attached to the zipper to be eight and a half inches since I have a half inch seam allowance on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that now. Then I can cut my zipper to length and add my zipper stops. In order for this to work correctly and come out the size that I need it to, I need to sew this flap to the zipper so that the edge of the fold over is right on the center of the zipper. Because there are no other seams to use as references, it's very helpful to baste the top panel into the rest of the assembly. And I just start off by centering it right on the zipper panel, and then I just need to make sure that when I get back around to the zipper panel, it's all smooth. I'm going to use my favorite basting method of a stapler to make sure that this doesn't go anywhere. With the top piece basted in place, I've put the cover on the dummy that I made and it seems to be fitting fine. It's not going to look exactly the same, just stuck together with some staples as it will when it's sewn together, but at least I can make sure that everything is in the right place before I finally sew it together. So there you have it, a completed, kind of complicated, interesting dust cover. I hope you got something out of that. If you liked it, do the things, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.